Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the last of our Mars sample return mission attempts and we hope that this time it will work but we do have some serious problems. Uh, last time we found out that the parachutes weren't uh, exactly configured right. I'm gonna try and fix that now but there's no guarantee that's gonna work any better. We'll go to let's say uh, 6,000 meters and 1,800 meters and see if that works better. Uh, really what condemned us wasn't the release of the heat shield even though that caused the ultimate explosion and uh, so I mean you go why did you release the heat shield there? Well basically because uh, the mission was already done for because the parachutes had snapped off and you know once the parachutes snap off that's it. It cannot land safely. Uh, so my best attempt was to try and dump the heat shield so that the thrusters would be less burdened. Be, but the thrusters are not meant to, uh, you know, deliver that much thrust that quickly. I mean, they're more for taking off again off of the Martian surface, not slowing down with that much uh, from that much acceleration. So um, basically, that's the that's the basic idea. So. We really need the parachutes to work if this is going to work. And if they don't work, uh, it really doesn't matter how, what I do with the heat shield at that point. So let's hope that these are better numbers. And another option I have is to try and use these thrusters to slow it down a little bit more as we approach the correct altitude for parachute deployment, but still no guarantees. Anyway, uh, we do need to get a closer periapsis here, so RCS on. Oh wait, uh, I think I need to lock some fuel up here. We don't want that being used right now. And I do want to remember that I've got a reaction wheel, so that's important. Okay, now no thrusters up there seem to be firing, so that's good, but we're going the wrong way. So. I've queued up uh, some new missions. First of all, I edited the Luna pod, so now we have Gemini lander engines on it. So they'll have a, more of a thrust range, but we still have to try it out, and there's no guarantees. I also changed the tank on the RD-58 to a cryogenic tank so it does not boil off like it did on the previous Luna pod mission, which caused us trouble. I also have developed the Quarter Pounder. Quarter Pounder is a supply mission to the surface of the moon, so to resupply our uh, lunar base as opposed to the lunar station so a, a direct resupply what we would like is to move supplies to like the lunar station and have something just go back and forth between the lunar base on the surface and the station but that's for the future um, trying to figure out what a good altitude would be here I'm gonna go for 46.4 uh, in an attempt to make sure we capture and if we if we land on that that's fine but I doubt it we will of course have to dump the service module. I'm tempted to use it to slow down, but maybe not such a good idea. That's the Delta Avionics Okay, good. All right, let's approach Mars. Okay, all right, normal. That's that. Okay, and then that's the heat shield. We can bring these thrusters down first. Okay. Uh, separation of this stage. I mean, it's sort of a shame. It's practically full. But we are here anyway, so it's done its mission. The lower we capture to, the safer we'll be. So if we end up in a really high elongated orbit around Mars, that's dangerous. If we end up in an orbit that's lower than Phobos, that's much better for the potential landing. Coming straight down is not all that great. Oh, we've got city textures on Mars. Uh-oh. Well, just in case, I'll arm the parachutes. Okay, we are going up again. We haven't captured yet. But we should capture. I mean, that was pretty low. For different missions, uh, I usually capture at 50 kilometers. We went 46 on this one. That should be good enough, Kerbal. 
Well, it does not look like it's good enough. That is surprising. That's almost like making me feel like something's wrong. But while I can, let me use our thrusters to slow down. And we see we do have a bit of a problem with our thrusters as far as rotation. We sort of knew that with, I think, the first mission. Alright, so uh, one week orbit should be fine and give us enough time to potentially look at Mars Base 1. That's important. That's part of the reason why we're interested in this mission. Okay, so the first pass was not deep enough to capture, which was a shame. Uh, let's see if at least a second pass will bring us down to the surface. We're at 44 kilometer periapsis now. Again, maybe this is just too heavy for this heat shield area, and that's why it's throwing off the calculations. Well, we are taking a hop here. I don't know. Will it really bring us down? Not sure. Okay, well, that did not lead to us capturing, uh, getting down to the surface, sorry. Uh, so we're going back around. And I don't think they'll outstrip our electric charge, so that's okay. And let's try this again. 39 kilometers now, so a little bit sharper on descent. But I'm getting a little bit impatient about the whole not getting down to the surface thing. Okay, we are finally going to come down here. And... Parachutes are armed, and unfortunately with this current approach, we're, we've got much less time to when we smack into the ground to burn off this velocity, so it's a tougher sort of situation altogether. Okay, 21 kilometers and 2300 meters per second, 18 kilometers and 2100 meters per second. 14 kilometers, 1800 meters per second. Well, I'll try and get some thrust, but we certainly can't slow it all down. I don't think the rotation's gonna help anything. Yeah, I mean, we. I'll just keep slowing down, but. No, they ripped off. <laughs> oh, great. Nope. There's no way. Yeah, of course, you know, heat shield or no heat shield, it's not gonna work. Okay, that exploded somewhere beneath the surface. But yeah might need a different parachute configuration on these particular Mars sample return missions. Um, I guess all we can hope for is that the Mars base has better configured parachutes, because otherwise it's probably going to meet the same fate. I guess we're going to find out. Well, on the bright side with our Mars base, which is fairly light for what, it, what it's worth, it's 20 tons. The previous mission was like 8 to 10 tons. Uh, it does have a larger heat shield. It looks more like a capsule shape. The other one looked a little bit taller. And it does have four parachutes instead of just two. Um, if we take a look at the info here. Pre-deployment 8,000, deployment 4,000. And then uh, this set, the main chutes. Um, why don't we have that be 4,000 You know, after the other ones fully deploy? And then deployment altitude. In fact, let's let's try and make it safer. The lower we are, the safer it is. Okay, maybe that'll work out. I don't know. We do have a maneuver planned here. And then it's only after the maneuver. The maneuver is supposed to get us closer to Mars, but it sure doesn't seem to do that. 
Hmm. Yeah. This seems like it would have been further off than we were supposed to be, huh? Pretty sure we're supposed to be aimed at Mars, not this far out. Somebody goofed. It's gonna cost a lot to correct whatever is going on here. Yeah, um, it doesn't strike me as reasonable that I left this with a 40 meter per second node that does nothing. Something definitely irregular about this. And then we have this correction that needs a thousand meters per second. Doesn't seem reasonable. Especially since we only budgeted 517 meters per second for a correction. Okay, uh, well, we seem to do the burn as well as we could, but as you can see, we, uh, we now don't have enough, hold on, let me turn that off. We now don't have enough, uh, Delta V to continue with this burn. I doubt it's going to be any better in here, is it? Oh no, it's much worse. So we do want to handle this as soon as possible. Uh, quite a while before this would have been better. Yeah, this is not going to hit Mars at all. I don't know what happened. M maybe it was an initial error. But we now don't have enough Delta V to have this reach Mars, so it's stranded. Uh, we'll just leave it alone, I guess. We'll have to try this again some other time. I think I need to work on the whole Mars landing stuff in general. And we'll have to revisit this whole Mars sample return and Mars base thing some other time. But this sortie did not work out, and the next opportunity is in about a year, so we can prepare for that. And I'll do some more testing on the side to make sure that goes a little bit better. But, as you can see, we have an Earth to Jupiter transfer window coming up. And finally, we get to launch our Nerva tug. So that's in storage, that'll be launched first. And then the Jupiter low orbit mission in an attempt to fulfill uh, that con a contract that we've had for quite a while, but takes a lot of Delta V. We'll see whether we can do it with that mission, or whether we actually have to send a Nerva all the way out there in order to fulfill it. Okay, here we are at long last with the launch of the Nerva Tug on a Fiji 2.4. We've got a special launch script for this just to resolve one potential issue. So hopefully it'll work all right. Fiji 2.4 Nerva. And so this is uh, two F1 engines and then a the core with four J2 engines. Not really the best arrangement, considering we can't light the J2s at the surface anyway. But it'll do for now. Relative inclination to the moon is 0.92. Of course, we're trying to get to Jupiter. Not with this. This is going to stay in orbit around the Earth. It is going to rendezvous with the intended payload. It is going to boost the payload to, let's say, around lunar orbit. And then the payload will take care of the rest of the transfer to Jupiter. The Nerva tug will then bring itself back down to a low Earth orbit in order to pick up the next payload. And we already have some boil off, but that's probably on the lower stage. I'm gonna just activate the radiators right now. We should have J2 ignition soon. There we go. The J2s are lit. Amazingly making more noise than the F1s. We've got a bit of a roll oscillation suddenly. And off go the F1s in an odd fashion, rolling away. Still got a bit of a roll oscillation going here. Okay, we are 
barely increasing our time to apoapsis. We got pretty close to zero on that, but we are now picking up again. Cruising right along at 134 kilometers. We're uh, just barely on the Delta V mark for making orbit. We'll probably need the Nerva to finish things off, but I'm not sure. Okay, getting ready for staging here. And yeah, we will need some of the Nerva stage. Not much though. Oop. Uh, okay, fine, I'll do it. Hmm. I sense we have a bit of a problem. Activate engine, that would be... Oh, shroud is not good. I don't like shroud. It says jettison shroud there. Oh. Game doing something. Okay. Uh, well, now can we do something? Well, there goes two of our ignitions. Uh, apparently we're not properly separated. Let me do the time warp thing. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. I sense... We got three, three engines were lost somewhere there. Oh! Okay, I, uh, I think, I think we had a glitch. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I think, I think we had a glitch. So, I'm going to allow a revert in this case. I don't know what to do to solve it, though. Hmm. What went wrong? I mean, obviously it didn't decouple properly, which is weird all on its own. Didn't seem to separate, right? I don't know. I guess we're going to do some experimentation with this Nova engine. Okay. So, revert. Let's try it again and see if we can do something different. Well, taking a look at the staging. Okay, that's the boosters. Then we, we decoupled this, but not those fairings. Why don't we just decouple those fairings at the same time and see... I mean... That's a trivial difference, but maybe it's enough. Um, I'm not entirely clear where these separation... Oh, maybe that's why those were all spinny. Those separation motors should be down there. Okay. I don't know. I do not know. So, let's just try and see what KOS does with this. So, throw down. Everything else went all right, except for the very end. Maybe I should just ignite the Nerva at the same time as the separation, I don't know. Though, it seemed to have a... You know what? Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll just let it go. It, it did seem to have a bit of an issue at the very end, the KOS script. Maybe the problem was the fact that the KOS script had that issue. Okay, J2 ignition. We certainly save those for when they have their maximum ISP, well, closer to maximum ISP. Certainly over 400 when they ignite. All right, and F1 booster separation is successful. No spinning this time. Um, if I put SAS on, that stops the roll. Maybe if we cut out the roll, it'll uh, save some delta V. Makes sense. I'm gonna risk trying to get this nose cone off. Not that that's gonna help right now, but maybe eventually. Okay, we had the error again. It pretended to... Let me, okay, maybe I can manually jettison these. I don't know if that's going to help anything. They were supposed to jettison. It showed that they were supposed to release, but I don't know what happened. 
Decouple? Okay, so is this decoupling? Maybe it's on a wrong node or something. Um, activate Jess and Shroud, just in case. Okay. Why don't I just use RCS? Um, can I push away? No, I think we're caught on there. Okay. Takes a little bit of time for the Nerva to warm up here. Mm. Well, we're not lifting our orbit and it's not really uh, blowing it up. Wouldn't mind it blowing it up, but it's not doing that. Okay, let's try time warp, uh, but it really sticks with us, and I'll probably blow, uh, everything will probably blow up, you know, as it does. Okay, it didn't really blow up, but it didn't really, well, actually we've got a nice high app waps now, for no apparent reason. Um, given that we're already in orbit, and uh, we really don't need everything flipping around all over the place. Uh, why don't... Oh, but then I can't revert. I, I wonder if it's KOS that's getting us stuck. I don't think so. I mean, it, but then why would the attachment nodes have this problem? It's not the attachment node at the top of the controller, by the way. It's definitely on the decoupler node. So I'm not sure. I'll try one more time and this time I guess I'll manually launch it and see what happens. I know that's not been done here but it might be the best solution. Let me just try it that way. So revert again, sorry. Okay so manual launch of this rocket and we're all ready to go. Ignition. And launch. Hmm. Interesting. Ignition of the J2s. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's just overcorrecting a lot right now. Mac Jep is. Okay, booster separation. Okay, let's see if the theory is correct. That's out, set. Okay, that doesn't look like the fairings are going off. This is just gonna be bad news, isn't it? What is up with this node issue? Yeah, it's stuck there. We're going down already. Um. It's possible that we could use RCS to lift ourselves up. Uh, not really. Okay, let me go back to the Space Center and pop back and see what everything's like. Well, it's actually looking pretty good if we can light that engine. Uh, looks like uh, going away and coming back allowed us to separate properly. But now we've got a little bit of time as this lights up. Hopefully there's no other problem here. It's not great on the whole gimbling thing. No, no, definitely not great at gimbling. Okay, but we are in orbit 207 by 155, and let's get rid of the nose cone. Otherwise, there's no way we're going to dock with anything. That's a Apollo docking system. 
All right, and uh, we've got some boil off. Let's activate the radiators. And supposedly having a nuclear reactor gives us internal electric charge, and it seems to. Uh, there's no there's no drop off in electric charge, but we do have emergency solar panels just in case. So I'll extend those. No point taking chances with such an expensive engine, though it looks like uh, we've got a peculiar sort of situation right now. Yep, uh, apparently when we want to launch this, we're going to have to go away from it and come back in order to get detached from the lower stage. Let me just uh, take a peek at it in the VAB and see what it looks like, and then we'll launch the payload for this, which it will then boost to a high orbit. Okay, so this was the launch, and if we take off the fairings, and right click on this I just want to make sure yeah it's on the right node otherwise it wouldn't be moving up like that we can uh, double check that there's not two nodes here and um, well the shear only seems to be one yep it's uh, definitely the bottom node of the Nerva so I would conclude that there's something wrong with it but we'll move on from that and we will proceed with the next launch and hopefully that'll go better than this did. Okay, here we go with the mission launch and I think this might be the debut of the Fiji 2R1. Uh, two F1 engines and RD270 on the center which is recoverable that has the floats and the parachutes and of course a single J2 upper stage. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so let me just check that we have a Fiji 2R1 here. Uh, yep, it's loaded in. And I really wanted to target our mission. We very lined up with it, but we seem to have lost. There we go. All right. So here goes this variation of the Fiji launcher. Run Fiji to R1. In this case, all three engines ignite. Oh, geez. Um, hold on. Uh, not thrust limit. <laughs> uh, let's have a gimbal limit here. I, I should have known this was coming. Actually, um, gimbal limit. Okay. Show act. Don't shut down engine. Show activation. Uh, let's not do either one of those. Let's just have the F1s handle roll, and the center engine handle everything but roll, obviously. And we'll give it more leeway now. Very pitch down too much. At, well, no, we've got a really high thrust to weight ratio as part of our problem. It's because we started off with a thrust to weight ratio of 1.7 that we had the wiggles. Obviously, a tremendously powerful rocket. Okay, boosters. Separating, and that is nominal. No problems there. Uh, there must be something wrong with the fairing separation. That's probably going to happen before we dump this stage. Which is good, this because they're huge and heavy. Yep. Off they go, safely, very important. And so here we see our mission. Uh, we will be tossed into high orbit by the Nerva, and then this stage with four RL-10s will 
proceed to get us on our Jupiter trajectory, assuming that this engine doesn't, like, rock us apart. And then we have a RL-10 with radiators, so that it's not going to have oil off, and that will help us once we get to Jupiter, because we need a lot of Delta V to capture into that low orbit. And up here we've got the S5.92 engine, the frigate upper stage engine using UDM HN204, pretty much the most efficient engine that uses UDM HN204, which is why we have it here. So again, this is just for contract fulfillment. At the bottom of this stage, you can see we do have the extension and a docking port. Obviously, the Apollo docking system being necessary to dock to the Nerva. Otherwise, it's all futile. Right now, our relative inclination to the Nerva is 0.38, so hopefully we will... Well, it just increased to 0.39, so now I'm worried. Okay, let's see how separation goes. That goes, that's fine. Uh, game's paused. Let's try and decide whether or not to crash. It doesn't, good. And then we have ignition of the J2 stage and the now useless tank. So all is well. Okay, about to make orbit here, though it really needs to get under hand here. You're gonna be a little bit lopsided, it looks like. Yep. Very much lopsided. And I used this ignition because I didn't throttle down initially. Okay. Rights. Um, we do have some fuel there. Maybe we can make an initial burn to rendezvous if we keep that for now. Okay, 5.6 is fine. So we get to use the J2 stage again after all. Nope, overdid it. Well, we can do the fine-tuning with the... Oh, well, maybe the RCS will help. Alright, let's release... And the mission is free. It's got a lot of uh, RTGs on it to provide power. Of course, it's going to Jupiter. It also has these emergency solar panels, just in case we needed extra supply uh, while this stage is running. Okay, we will have the Nerva stage handle the rest of the rendezvous. Okay, we are now approaching the target, and we've got 130 meters per second to burn off. That's a bit inconvenient, but we'll do it with the Nerva. So we're going to use another ignition. It has a limit of 60. Well, we'll do the rest of RCS. We do carry quite a lot of RCS, though it will need to be replenished. Alright, it was sort of a tedious rendezvous, and I've been in fizz warp like most of the time. But we are now approaching. Tedious, of course, because we didn't want to light the main engine so it's been all RCS. But that's pretty much how this is going to have to do things. We do want to preserve as many of those ignitions as possible. Oh, okay, no I didn't want that stage. Uh-oh. Oh no! Oh shucks. I've rendezvoused with the wrong thing. <laughs> I rendezvoused with the spend stage instead of with the mission. Ah, oh, that's a whole lot of effort wasted. Oh, dang it. Okay, well, we see the mission back there, I think. 
Yeah, that's the mission. Okay, well, we can fix this. Okay, we have connected. All right, so we are all connected up. And let's have MechJeb plot for Jupiter. Create node, 7,000 meters per second. Right now it says we have 4,318. And our total mass is 107 tons in orbit. 38 minutes. So again, we don't want to do the whole thing with the Nova stage. And of course, because its stage time is 18 minutes, um, we're, we're going to have to start out a little bit early or we could do it in two runs maybe we should just do two orbits it shouldn't be too far off because we're talking about Jupiter here okay so we're starting five and a half minutes before the node let's say and we'll see how we end up five minutes after the node okay well I tried physical time warp and uh, things went badly Things have gone very badly. Um, that's the one, yeah. Make sure you're controlling from there. Uh, but it seems to be all over the place right now. That's not going to help. Well, we're going to have to take an extra ignition. And uh, why don't we wait until we make another orbit around before we continue this? Let me have MechJeb replot at this point. We already did, oh, 1,700 meters per second. We still want to do more with the Nerva. We're getting close to where I need to shut down this stage. And judging where we're at in the burn, maybe we'll go around again with this mission? I don't know. I mean, we're talking about an orbital period of a day and 10 hours right now. Maybe we should just continue as is. but we do seem to be a bit off. Okay, let's shut down on a two hour orbit. I think that's pretty good. And let's hope that it accepts the situation. We'll say we're reserving this amount for it to come back down. Let us decouple now. Okay, well, it has 3,090 meters per second, which should be enough to bring itself back down. That's as intended. And here, we would like to control from here now. Make sure. And RCS on, pushing away. And this stage... Ha oh, jeez. Dang it! I've made a horrible mistake. Um... Well, you know what? Control from here instead. Let's redock and get get ourselves that hydrogen back. So we need 74,000 over there. And we've got 126,000 here. So it has some extra afterwards, but not much. We're going to have to remember to turn off fuel crossfeed whenever docking another mission to this. Now this is fully loaded and this has a thousand four hundred and twenty three. Not nothing, but not as much as we would have liked. It'll still help. Okay, but the main mission is going to go around and need a replot. Where is our node? Shouldn't it show it here? It's not really showing our maneuver node. Hmm. Also, I note that the resources panel is bugged out. So... A little bit worried about exactly what's going to happen here, but let's get on with it. I'm running out of time here. Let's hope everything will turn out all right. 
The reason we needed four RL tens, by the way, is because of the limited burn time. They're limited to seven minutes and fifty seconds. We need upgraded RL tens to reduce the number that we need. Okay, about to finish this burn. And hopefully we'll have a Jupiter encounter at the end of it. Okay. Need another 4.4. Point out the node now. Let's see, what's the situation? That looks legit. Um, but I don't really see our outbound orbit. I think it'd be best for me to restart the game. I think it's missing some information like resources, that maneuver node, where the heck I'm going, you know, stuff like that, which I find, you know, important. Yeah, definitely missing key information here. So, restart time. Alright, so after restarting, I discovered that we had a Jupiter encounter, but it wasn't a good one. So we're doing a adjustment here of 254 meters per second, and mostly radio, which means it was a timing issue. And, you know, we could uh, do it closer to Jupiter, but considering what just happened with the Mars mission and the maneuver close to Mars, I think I'd rather get it done here so I'm not befuddled once we get to Jupiter. So if we take a look at our total delta V here, we've got 10,350, and let's shut down there and just use RCS. Oh, uh, let's plug up that RCS for now. So the question is whether 10,000 once we get there is going to be good enough or not. Okay, that's better. That's 866 there. Ah, 10,986 meters per second. So altogether, maybe 2,000 short. Nice try though. Well, let, let's proceed like this for now. Um, maybe there are ways to optimize this, but we'll decide when we get there with this maneuver in about two years. So at least, well, there's hope of completing the mission. We didn't really have much hope until we unlocked the Nerva, frankly. Okay, well, We'll look at this once we get there and see if there's anything we can do about it. Okay, so last thing here, we're going to bring the Nerva tug down a bit. It's got periapsis of 221 kilometers. We don't want to use all of it because it might need to uh, provide some help as far as rendezvous is concerned, but I'd say we definitely want its orbital period a little bit quicker. Our inclination isn't great either but we would want to fix that at apoapsis. No, uh, 31.9 things should be able to rendezvous with it, so let's not. Let's not mess with that for now. It's only going to be used for interplanetary transfers anyway. Maybe to the moon, but we can figure out the moon when that time comes. Okay, we'll hold at about a six hour orbit and we'll reserve the rest. So, whatever, we'll send up a refueling vessel. Okay, so the Nerva has done its first job. And, well, it didn't do so well, but that was because of wiggly docking ports, so we'll forgive it. Uh, we really have to watch the burn times with this thing. It takes a while, and that makes the execution of the maneuver nodes a little bit inaccurate. A lot inaccurate. So... Yeah, that's going to be a downside, but so far so good. We've got 55 ignitions left, so whatever we did, we could probably do it like nine more times. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.